sure these colors bleed red, white, and blue, and yours will too. Who needs four doors? That's for... Losers, you need a V8 or maybe a 2.3 liter. You get a manual or a six speed slash 10 speed automatic and you get your own I voted sticker from anything north of 55. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a time where you wanted to own one of these, but now you want to know the next step. We're talking about how to modify an S550 Mustang. <laughs> your car at martiniworks.com authentic real parts wheel and tire packages suspension and more baby built for the community simple as that now before you learn to modify this thing we need to know why it was even birthed into this world the ford mustang the official car of i care about the primary it came off the news of sales plummeting in 2013 to a mere 80,000 mustangs okay being sold which is a nerf number compared to 166,000 that were sold seven years prior so the old updated domestic course had some living up to do and when the sixth gen mustang was unveiled in michigan people were jazzed. It was also unveiled in Los Angeles. People were wow. And then New York. People were saucy. And it was also introduced in Barcelona, Shanghai, and Sydney. At the same time, Worldwide choppers, okay? Tech nine up in this shit. The Mustang got the support. It desperately needed to grow sales. It went international. Now, good for them because the restrictions of selling globally actually helped Ford develop this interesting, fascinating new technology for this car called independent rear suspension. <laughs> That's kind of a joke. The world loved this car and still do. The S550 handles better. It feels better. It's a car that connected the old generational enthusiasts to new ones. Now, sure, the SVT Cobra had IRS, but this was the first time that it wasn't hidden behind some sort of huge upfront trim cost. Now, the shark bite design gave it a downward sloped headlight design that worked well with a dropped height, and it was still an inch and a half wider than the previous generation. You got a car that even the stance community was like, hold the f up. This is pretty sick. And the worldwide chop a Mustang would give people like you and people like me the ability to buy literally any Mustang we'd want for this generation. 2.3 liter EcoBoost inline fours for the daily drivers and the cost conscious folk. You got a 3.7 liter for an 18 year old rich kid who, you know, the parents thought were maybe the Coyote 5.0 is too much. And the Coyote V8 for the grandpa that, you know, you don't want to have in the back of a live stream to say something unfortunate. So here we are, ready to buy a car that I can say without any sarcasm can fit almost every lifestyle. But you don't want to know the history how the f do you modify one of these bad boys well buckle up because the goosebumps level trim options are going to make this a tough one to break down but we'll make it easy let's start with the 2.3 liter ecoboost it's a turbocharged inline four cylinder where you can enter the tune zone if you want to to which at 310 horsepower it's actually pretty good even though the nickname of the engine is known as the eco boom the problem is because people overbuild the engine so for the mods here ask yourself if a turbo swap is in the plans because if it is it's going to open it up to some things like a precision turbo just just opening it up to breathe a little bit more, not adding extra boost, paired with the tune can help a ton, especially the second half of the torque curve because it is kind of dog water. Now, from there, it's easy. You got a Burger Motorsports JB4, or if you like Cobb, you can go with that if you want. It's kind of an odd scenario with them, but we'll still state it for the video. Now, a k and air intake system is awesome. Borla catback exhaust and headers if you really want to open it up. But if you keep it below 400 horsepower, if you do a tune, you're going to be set. The engines do fail because of how thin the cylinder walls are, and they can't take the added compression and heat that mods typically throw at the block very well. You can cool it off with like a Mishimoto radiator or similar if you want, but that's not going to cure a 400 horsepower green shower of coolant falling out of the car after a fifth gear pull on the highway. Now, jumping into the other motors, you got the 3.7 liter and a 5 liter Coyote engine. You can replace the conversation around the tune zone because it's a typical domestic motor conversation. More air in, more air out. The thing to keep in mind here is because modifying a Mustang is like going to a buffet in Las Vegas, you can do anything. You can get as insane as you want with the platform. Cams, manifolds, tune, exhaust, force induction, sway bars, pretty much anything you want. But none of that shit matters if you don't plan to use whatever the hell you're looking to add. That's why more often than not, these cars get undrivable super quick. They're overbuilt cars. 700 horsepower is slick shit, but realizing how much of a pain in the ass it is to daily it while your suspension is set up for a stockish powered car is going to suck. And the result is quite usually running into crowds. That's where the joke comes from. Now, say what you will, but the platform is easy to modify. Along with the drivetrain being like the perfect driver's car, it makes it really easy to overbuild these cars. So start simple. 400 horsepower in any of the motors will make you happy doing pretty much anything. 500 horsepower is so you can brag online that you have more than 400. 600 horsepower is acceptable if you spent time getting the power through the tires in a straight line or a round of bend. Otherwise, you're just 
not gonna use it. 800 horsepower is a pretty serious drag territory number and not for anyone who still posts inspirational quotes on their story when they're feeling down. You need a therapist, not the internet. 1,000 horsepower is for the camera car for Texas 2K and where you get to when you realize that drag racing is actually hella fun. And so is street racing, but we don't condone that. 1400 horsepower is when you decide to do all the things you can do to take this car to pretty much space because you're about to get divorced and you love cars and you don't really care what happens to your future. Trust me, anything is possible with these cars. Should you decide to build your motor to a tolerable driving level like a normal human, we'd recommend getting into the suspension, going straight for VC racing coilovers, which you can get at martiniworks.com, and then hopping into a 20 inch staggered nine wide, 10 wide setup, or a 10 and 11 wide setup. I like the 20 by nine plus 30 and 20 by 10 and a half plus 45 look with two 7535 and 30535 as it sits on the car the best. But you do get a little tall without really playing with the suspension. Most lift wheels on non-stance cars look funky. And because the car is so angular and sharp from that front three quarter shot, you want to stick with like the straight spoke concave design wheels and not anything that has that much curve to it. Now you might think it's time to modify your whole car on Martini Works right now. That's a plug. And I don't, you know, want to, I don't want to tell you not to, but pump your brakes a little bit, okay? Because what you need to think about before you go do about that is like, think about the whole build. Plan for the whole thing. Lots of S550s can look a bit randomized. Big duck bills with wild lipped wheels on lowering springs and a universal muffler and stock resonators. Usually there's underglow and half the tint is falling off and the car is crying out for help because the intake manifold snapped and you just gotta, you know, you just keep deciding to drive it instead of fix it. Don't be that guy or gal. If you want to stand out in the huge community around this kick-ass platform, it starts with understanding what the end picture will look like just a little bit. So how do you modify an S550 Ford Mustang? Easy, baby. You're going to spend anywhere between like fifteen dollars to $35,000 on the car because there's a million trim options. And the first thing you'll need to do is look for rust on the front hood near the headlights and the front fenders. After removing the cigarette smoke that's going to be in these cars, it's time to go for suspension first, and we recommend going with BC Racing. Then a wheel entire package, either staggered like I said above, or run some bunk square setup that I think looks a little odd. After that, it's all about the exhaust and the intake, which you should still be able to avoid the tune zone until you get near the headers or change up the fuel injection system. It's at this point where an EcoBoost owner, you'll think of doing like E85 and saying you can have 400 horsepower. And to that, I recommend just, just stay below 400, I promise you. Coyote and V6 owners thrive in the fact that you can do the same thing without a turbocharger and you'll have plenty of fun. Now, a well-planted car, an S550 can really be a fun driver's car and there's literally nothing the Mustang can't do. But the failure of it as a platform usually resides in the hands of its owner and that's you, so be nice to it. If you need help building your car, just message us on the website and we'll be glad to help you out. I mean, most importantly, if you're looking around for parts, Check us out, it mean a lot. If you've got a Mustang already built, add it to our build threads over at martiniworks.com so you can help people mod their car and avoid the mistakes you probably already made that you just don't tell anybody because you don't want to seem vulnerable. It helps the community. I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores on Instagram. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one. Adios.